It's him! The evil cola with eyes! Ah! Will you keep it down, young lady? We're trying to sleep here. But the evil cola with eyes is here! Ah! Keep it down! Alright, welcome to our scene on E. coli, represented by the evil cola over here with eyes. Evil cola with eyes for E. coli. In this scene, we're going to talk about the characteristics of E. coli, as well as the diseases that it's associated with. So let's begin. So let's begin with the structure of E. coli itself. We notice this guy over here is a rod, as E. coli is a bacteria that's a rod. And it's red because it's gram negative. It stains red or pink in gram staining. We also notice his arms and legs are sort of like projections. This reminds us of the fimbrae of E. coli. E. coli have fimbrae, which permit its adhesion to host cells. You might have noticed that he's wearing a cap over here to help us remember that E. coli is encapsulated. And specifically, it's got a K on it to help us remember the K capsule. Soon we're going to talk about what this K capsule is responsible for. And finally over here, we notice the lollipop that it's holding. Lollipop for lipopolysaccharide, LPS. E. coli has an LPS endotoxin, which has important functions, which we'll talk about soon. So this E. coli guy over here has come to scare these two people in the hospital room over here. These two people over here are being treated for a urinary tract infection, as E. coli is the most common cause of urinary tract infections. But let's take a look behind this patient over here, and we'll come back to the patient soon. So over here we see the random Dole logo over here. Maybe someone in the hospital enjoys Dole applesauce or something, so they put the sign over here. But anyway, the Dole is going to help us remember Indole. Indole positive. E. coli is an Indole positive rod. Then we note the cat that's staring at this milk. This cat shows up in our catalase positive videos, as E. coli is a catalase positive organism. And the milk over here is also going to help us remember lactose, as E. coli ferments lactose. And specifically, it forms pink colonies on the Makanki agar. Actually, you might have noticed that this girl's hair over here is green, and this is going to help us remember the green sheen. On the EMB agar, lactose fermenters grow as purple-black colonies, while E. coli grows colonies with a green sheen. Okay, now let's talk about the patients themselves, and afterwards we're going to talk about the nurses in the back. So here we have a patient over here, and you might have noticed that she's just a kidney. She's just a kidney with a bladder. And they're inflamed. The bladder on fire is going to help us remember cystitis, which is inflammation of the bladder due to infection. And the kidney on fire is going to help us remember pyelonephritis. E. coli is responsible for cystitis and pyelonephritis. And specifically, the fimbrae of the E. coli are responsible for the pathogenesis of these infections. And that's why we have this E. coli guy's fimbrae over here shooting this girl and setting her on fire. Again, this helps us remember that the fimbrae are responsible for the infection of the bladder and the kidney. Then we take a look over here. We see this gnome guy over here. He's also in the hospital. And he has his pet brain over here. He likes to bring his pet brain with wherever he goes. This gnome is going to help us remember pneumonia. And the little brain over here that's on fire is going to help us remember neonatal meningitis. E. coli is responsible for pneumonia as well as neonatal meningitis. And specifically, it's the K capsule that leads to the pathogenesis of pneumonia and neonatal meningitis. And that's why he has his K-cap over here, shooting the gnome and the baby brain. This helps us remember that it's the K-capsule that's involved in the pathogenesis of pneumonia and neonatal meningitis. And finally, this E. coli guy over here has a lollipop that he likes to use as a scepter. This helps us remember that it's the LPS endotoxin, which is responsible for septic shock. E. coli is actually the leading cause of gram-negative sepsis. Finally, let's talk about the nurses in the back. They were so busy arguing over who's going to eat the burger that they didn't even realize what was going on. Let's talk about these nurses over here. So let's talk about this one over here, the EIEC nurse. This nurse's name is Eek. Eek for enteroinvasive E. coli. Enteroinvasive E. coli invades intestinal mucosa and causes necrosis and inflammation. That's actually why her stomach area over here is on fire. To help us remember the necrosis and inflammation of the intestinal mucosa. And this is quite intuitive. The name suggests it, enteroinvasive, as it invades 
and it can cause dysentery, and it has clinical manifestations similar to Shigella. Then we come up to Etek. This is Etek over here, and she's sort of floating. She's sort of traveling. Etek, or enterotoxigenic E. coli, is responsible for traveler's diarrhea. E. coli is a common cause of traveler's diarrhea, which is a watery diarrhea, which presents with abdominal cramping, nausea, and vomiting. With enterotoxigenic E. coli, there's no inflammation or invasion. Then we come up to Etpaja. Etpaja is a little girl. And this helps us remember that enteropathogenic E. coli is usually in children, and it again presents with diarrhea. This type of bacteria adheres to apical surfaces, flattens villi, and prevents absorption, thus leading to diarrhea, and again, usually in children. And finally, we get up to the burger over here. The nurses are fighting over the burger, the F burger. F for enterohemorrhagic. Enterohemorrhagic E. coli is the final type of E. coli that we're going to discuss. O157H7 serotype is the most common serotype in the US, and that's why this burger's price is 157. It's often transmitted through undercooked meat, and that's why we have this hamburger over here that they're arguing over, and the meat in this hamburger is actually undercooked. It's also found in raw leafy vegetables, and that's why we have the vegetables over here inside this burger. Enteromeragic E. coli produces a sugar-like toxin which causes hemolytic uronic syndrome, which has a triad of anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute kidney injury, and this is due to the microthrombi forming on damaged endothelium. Enteromeragic E. coli again causes bloody diarrhea, and one more point that we're going to make about it is you might have noticed that these nurses are actually on the taller side. They're sort of tall. Even the little girl is sort of tall. The hamburger is not sort of tall. Sort of tall for sorbitol. All the different types of E. coli are sort of tall, meaning they ferment sorbitol. Sorbitol. The one exception to that is the hamburger. The enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Enterohemorrhagic E. coli does not ferment sorbitol. Okay, thank you so much for watching our scene on E. coli. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.